Um, it's my special pleasure now to introduce Roger Wilson to, to the stage. Uh, he's the honorary president of Sarcoma Patient Advocacy Global Network. And um, he's giving a talk on what is a sarcoma specialist center addressing the need for core principles and a globally acceptable definition. Uh, thank you both. And thank you, CETOS, for the opportunity to talk about the work that we've been doing. Uh, this project started with a very simple question. Amongst those who have experience with sarcoma, it's undisputed that people with sarcoma should be treated by experts in specialist centres. Data may be limited, but there is ample evidence that patients benefit. These terms, specialist centre or expert centre, are rarely defined. There is no specification that patients can check. Without clear criteria and a definition, it's difficult for patients and families to understand the level of expert care they should expect for management of their sarcoma from a treatment centre. Clarity would also help advocates advise patients. And we know that there is valuable and powerful advocacy from professionals, not just from advocates. Similarly, there are no standards or guidelines for a hospital or a healthcare system that they can use when establishing an expert centre. Our objective with this project was to offer patients, advocates, specialist professionals and healthcare providers a tool which informs and underpins their plans to improve the care of people with sarcoma. SPAN, together with expert sarcoma doctors, has endeavoured to identify features and principles for optimal sarcoma management, as well as an appropriate term for a system that could be applied across the world. Our method? We developed a discussion paper, which informed a workshop at the SPAN Annual Conference in 2023, attended by 75 delegates. This was followed by a position paper, which puts forward relevant features, as well as our proposed approach. And this position paper is a, is a living document. Uh, it's available in our suite and will be available online. It's looking for your comments, your input, and it sets out the core principles which would underlie all sarcoma care. But first, our chosen overarching term for a specialist centre is a sarcoma intelligent specialist network. Now, the core principles. The primary principle is the multidisciplinary team approach that includes multidisciplinary review and discussion of every patient at first diagnosis and during ongoing treatment. That review needs an accurate pathological diagnosis and should, should be followed by safe, high quality treatment with curative intent delivered as close to home as practical taking advantage of clinical trials, if available. The recommendations and features which we have identified to support that describe areas of healthcare, professional involvement, and care provision. Features include access to relevant disciplines to decide on future therapy strategies in a multidisciplinary manner, including imaging, pathology, surgery, radiation, paediatric and medical oncology, genetics, and perhaps more challenging in some countries, techniques such as advanced ablative therapies, including proton beam, access to nuclear medicine, expertise in immunotherapy clinical trials. You can accept the list. All disciplines should be engaged in continuous medical education and participation in relevant con congresses, such as CETOS, so they have access to the latest information. 
a minimum standard is indicated that allows for variations forced by national or local policies and budgets. We put forward the Sarcoma Intelligence Specialist Network for global use as a commonly accepted term. The word intelligent has been chosen to reflect the fact that in multidisciplinary provision there is always something to learn and improve, including sometimes the need to bring in extra specialised skills not available in the Sarcoma MBT. Now many specialist centres are already single site MBTs and we want to continue to use the term specialist centre. Our choice of network does not disqualify that description, but applying the network term will broaden the concept of expert care and will encourage expert sarcoma management to be available to patients no matter where they are located in the world. Now, how will we assess what a centre or network group offers so that everyone knows they're dealing with a centre which meets the standard? External accreditation is clearly not feasible. Apart from any other factor, the costs would be prohibitive. So this must rely on self-appraisal and honesty and should involve local patients. We have summarised the core principles and supporting factors on a single sheet of paper. Record a green box when a standard is met, an orange or yellow box when work is underway to achieve that standard, and a red box when work has not yet started. Or when other factors such as local legislation, budgets, or national practice mean that it cannot currently be met. Three green boxes at the top is the primary requirement. There is no shame in a red box. It's an honest appraisal of real life. It represents an area too where patient advocacy may have a role. It may identify where pressure can be brought to bear to uplift a service that the MDT offers to its patients. Appraisal, as I said, should involve patients. It should be undertaken at regular intervals and should be publicly available. There will be centres with green all through, but that's not the primary aim of this. The aim is to ensure that all patients are treated where the three core principles are met. And while the more green boxes that support that, the better, an all green aspiration may not be realistic for reasons which are beyond control. I repeat, there is no shame in a red box. So we would like this Sarcoma Intelligent Specialist Network logo to be adopted and recognised as a sign of excellence. A sign of excellence to patients. We welcome discussion by the Sarcoma community from different parts of the world. Our paper is available and we want your comments. We are open to further suggestions. We believe that clarity about the value to patients, which comes from expertise in their treatment, makes a huge difference. And we want to make this proposal as feasible as possible for adoption by all healthcare systems across the world. Thank you. Question. <laughs> yes, please. I'm Jackie Conrad from Houston and uh, participant of the uh, SARC. Roger, I'd like to applaud you and SPAN for your work with this global effort, which is laudable and valuable and I think of tremendous significance. Thank you, Jackie. Um, I do think it's helpful to recognize some of the precedents set at the national level for both collaboration in incorporation and consistency of solving sort of differences of opinion in the future about where the good centers and are and where they are not. We're in the middle of uh, announcing a re renovation of the SARC system and are going to make a major effort to be inclusive 
of all uh, centers that are treating sarcoma patients, not just the specialty uh, high level centers that are sort of academically inclined, but also the non-academic centers, so that we are inclusive about where half of the sarcoma patients in America are getting treated, and probably even more so at a, at a global level. Those precedents, to my awareness, are the MCI program, uh, Comprehensive Cancer Centers established in 1971. Certainly my British friends at the UK have a very good system uh, that they designated specifically sar sarcomas. And uh, my Dutch friends in Holland have also done a great job of establishing a, a national program in Holland uh, through their uh, patient advocacy groups and their own uh, MCI, which even predates the MCI in the United States. So I think it's a tremendous amount of work that you're doing, and I really uh, would love, to, we will definitely be supporting all of your efforts with, with great vigor. Uh, just say, let's recognize that there's some of the national systems that are established, where the guidelines are established, that, which are very, very similar to yours, and a little more detail. So uh, congratulations on tremendous work. Thank, thank you, Chaplin. Thank I, you. I would emphasize, of course, that we have been, we're aware of these, uh, I think uh, the systems that are in place in the UK and the Netherlands. Uh, we've been talking with the Sarcoma, Sarcoma uh, Foundation in uh, the USA, uh, and uh, I'd like to think that uh, when you announce your SARC uh, initiative, um, that we can work alongside, work together, because uh, our aims, I think, overlap quite substantially. So, uh, thank you for your support. Okay, so, sorry, but we have to go on. We'll be already behind time.